And now, to move things in an entirely different direction, I'm going to begin this chapter with a non sequitur drama about something passing for some reason. No, maybe I won't. That's just cheesy. What I'm going to do instead is... Who is this guy? Here I am riding my motorcycle down the road while trying to film a YouTube video because I'm a moron. And here this car is trying to tailgate behind me. Perhaps he came to pass, when all the kings which were on this side Jordan, in the hills, in the valleys, in the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon, and in the bowling alleys, and in supermarkets, and in the national parks, by the beach, sailing on the ocean, and flying an airplane, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Parasite, the Hivite, the Jebusite, the Mexican, and the Chinese, and the Canadian, and the Cuban, the Kenyan, the English, and your next-door neighbor, and that weird guy on the other side of him, and your cousin Joe Bob Ray, heard thereof. That they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. And they did walk down the back alley wearing black leather jackets, gathering more and more friends to walk beside them toward their opposing gang's turf. Now, we know that this is the entirety of this particular chapter, and in no way is the verse immediately following this one going to suddenly change the topic of the rest of the video. And in no way does a sudden change in topic use of different words and different literary styles betray this section of the chapter as a mere interpolation added after the fact in order to satisfy the political or theological claims of powerful people who want to pull the wools over the eyes of the unwashed, illiterate masses. Certainly, this never happened. Certainly, the bulk of this chapter follows along the same theme as the opening two verses. Remember, this chapter is about a major battle between the Israelites and other pre-existing Semitic ethnic groups in Bronze Age Palestine. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon, a small city north of Jerusalem that has not appeared in the Bible unto this very verse, heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and Ai, Ai! mostly because their friend reposted a plagiarized religiously based poem on their Facebook page, they did work oh, wildly, willily, wildly? They did work in a beguiling manner, deliberately scheming the Israelites, much in the same way that the famous Israelites had done at other times throughout their history, according to this 3,000-year-old book of stupid. And they went and made as if they had been ambassadors, and they took old sacks upon their asses, and wine bottles old in rent, and bound up, and did swatch VHS tapes on old CRT television sets, and did listen to Sandy Lopper cassette tapes in their Walkmans. And they did talk about Oliver North's shady testimony in the Iran-Contra affair. And old shoes clouded upon their feet, and old garments upon them, especially their acid watch jeans, bolts upon their heads, and they did say, business in front, party in the back. And all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy, and they were forced to turn unto the staples of their diet cold pizza, and warm beer. And they went to Joshua and to the camp at Gilgal, which, as you recall, is the name of the camp where the children of Israel had a huge barbecue, and they sat around in a circle and chopped the tips of their cocks off. This assumes, of course, that you have either read the fifth chapter of this book of stupid, or perhaps at least watched a video version of Literary Joshua Chapter 5. Now, when the Israelites went back to Gilgal, the Bible does not specify, but we can reasonably assume that it happened sometime between the end of chapter 8 and the start of chapter 9. Officially, this book of stupid no longer makes sense and no longer follows a linear narrative, and in no conceivable way doth this constitute yet another interpolation at an end after the fact being completely out of place and out of sequence with the rest of the narrative. So they came into the camp at Gilgal and said to Joshua, and to the men of Israel, we be come from a far country, and we also be speaking Ebonics, yo. Therefore, make ye a league with us, and join ye us in a secret fortress in the mountains, wherein we may track the actions of Superman. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, but apparently not the Hivites mentioned earlier in this chapter, and possibly also not the same Hivites mentioned in later chapters. The Hivites, which in this particular case means villager in the original Hebrew, just like every other appearance of the word throughout the Bible, they said unto these Hivites, somehow different from every other Hivite in the Bible, peradventure ye dwell among us, over in that trailer park over there on the other side of the train tracks. And how shall we make a league with you? 
for you are trying to find Superman, and we are trying to find the level 85 Blood Elf Paladin. And they, they being the Hivites that are so much different from the other Hivites standing over yonder up the road, said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye? For I did not remember hiring ye, not to mow my lawn, nor to babysit my kids, neither hired I ye to clean my house. And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come, because of the name of the Lord thy God. And just like other immigrants from very far countries, we are willing to perform many a task for a minimum wage. For we have heard the fame of him, and what he did in Egypt. And all they did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon king of Heshbon, and Og the king of Bashan, which was at Aftaroth. And of course, as we all know, there will be scholars known as archaeologists in many years to come who shall investigate all of these claims and shall come to the conclusion that none of these events actually happened. Wherefore, our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake unto us, all at the same time, talking over the top of one another. And one of the elders told everybody else to shut the bloody hell up because he was trying to talk. And he spake it to us, saying, Take victuals for you for the journey, and go to meet them, and saying to them, Use in a quote, within a quote, within a quote, from verse, within a chapter, in the book of stupid, within a volume of other books of stupid. We are your servants. Therefore now make ye a league with us, and join ye us in the secret fortress in the mountains, wherein we may track the actions of Superman. And this our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. And our wives got mad at us, and our children did cry because they no longer had any fresh hot bread to eat, and in no way is this in a run on sentence. But now, behold, it is dry and it is moldy, and we are now forced to eat cold pizza and warm beer. And these bottles of wine which we filled were new, and behold, they be rent. And now we are forced to drink water so that we cannot get drunk every day. And these garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey, for we had been wearing brand new blue jeans, and now, behold, they appeared to be acid-washed. And the men took up their victuals, but bugger off, the Bible tells us which men took whose victuals, as this verse seems to indicate that the Israelites ate the Hivites, I mean the Gibeonites, dry, moldy food, and old wine in red bottles. And they asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord, for at this point, the mouth of the Lord had a hamburger stuffed inside of it, eating it right in front of the hungry Gibeonites. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live, deliberately breaking the commandment of God that they were to indiscriminately murder every innocent man, woman, and child in Palestine. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them, though it is odd that the Israelites would have princes if they did not yet have kings. But we have to agree that they were princes, because the King James Version of the Bible is completely accurate and non-contradictory, and the very best translation of the Bible in any language throughout all of recorded history. And we are going to ignore the original Hebrew, which says that they were leaders, or captains, or chiefs, take unto thyself thine own pick, or that the concept alludeth unto a vapor or a cloud that rises above all others, and say that this translation is very highly accurate when it refers to these people as princes. And that bastard that had been tailgating me finally passed me, and I rubbed up my ninjas to try to catch up to him. After all, I came to pass too. At the end of three days after they had made a league with him, that they heard that they were their neighbors, and that they dwelled among them, and there is no way that this verse could be construed as to be overly vague, and in no way that it might be reinterpreted to have the exact opposite message than it was supposed to. Behold the proper interpretation. And it came to pass at the end of three days that the Israelites had made a league with the Gibeonites, that the Israelites heard that the Gibeonites were the Israelites' neighbors, and that the Gibeonites dwelt among the Israelites. Now, sure, that is certainly trite and a bit redundant, but consider the alternate translation of this completely accurate literal and non-contradictory verse. <clears throat> And it came to pass at the end of three days that the Gibeonites had made a league with the Israelites, that the Hivites heard that the Jebusites were the Martians' neighbors, and the Jovians dwelt among the Phoenicians. Art thou not glad that there is only one possible interpretation of this verse? And the children of Israel journeyed, and the adults of Israel sat around and listened to Journey, and did try to sing along with the tape, Stoppest thou not believing? Holdeth unto that feeling. And the children of Israel did tell the adults of Israel to shut the hell up, for they were butchering the song. 
And they came into their cities on the third day, whichever day that was. Now the cities were Gibeon, which had a large shopping mall, and Sephora, where there was an opera house, and Beeroth, which had a famous brewery, wherefore it's called Beeroth, and Kirjath Jerim, which enjoyed a fantastic nightlife, and of course thou knowest where any of these cities are located. And the children of Israel smote them not, even though they really, really wanted to, because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Lord the God of Israel, that if they did not pick up that piece of wood and draw that pitcher of water, that they would knock them so far into next week that their friends would not even recognize them. They are not even killing thee. And all the congregation murmured against the princes, for they really, really wanted to knock the Gibeonites into next week, perhaps even into next month. But all the princes said unto the congregation, We have sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel, and they did complain unto human resources about our incessant use of profanity. And our supervisor did give us a warning that we must wash our language, lest we get fired. Now, therefore, we may not touch them. This we will do to them. We will sneak into the cabin at night and place one hand in cold water and the other in warm water, and then we will sneak out so as to not get caught when they wake up underneath their wet blankets. We will even let them live, which is awful nice of us, considering our conduct thus far in this narrative, wherein we have killed every living thing that moveth, and even a few things that moveth not. Lest wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swear unto them, uh, causing our boss to give us yet another stern talking unto. And the princes of Israel said unto them, Let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation. As the princes had promised them, and at this point we are referring to ourselves in the third person. And Joshua, the son of Anun, Moses' minister, called for them on their cell phones, and he spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have you beguiled us, having worked well ye, or will ye her, however thou sayest that, saying, We are very far from you, for thou turnest around our telescopes whilst we were not looking. When ye dwell among us, which is something that the viewer of this video or the reader of this book of stupid would say that we should have already known about. And why is it that I am pretending to know nothing about the situation when just a few verses ago I was very clearly and undeniably one of the princes of Israel that met you when he first told us that you were travelers from a far off country? It must have been that uh, other guy named Joshua. I hate that guy. Now therefore ye are cursed. And none of you shall be free for being bondsmen, and hewers of wood, and drawers of water unto the house of my God. For most certainly thou art to be indentured servants, working off debts, and not slaves that are to be held in bondage for the rest of thy lives. And the answer Joshua and said, Because it was certain told thy servants, we certainly ought to start calling ourselves that, ought we not? How that the Lord thy God commanded his servant Moses to give thee all the land, though it was already appointed unto Abraham four and forty years ago, yet never delivered unto him, and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you, which thou art already violating by making us slaves instead of killing us. Therefore we were sore afraid of our lives because of you, because it seems to be perfectly natural to fear a group of wandering bandits who commit epic acts of mass murder, genocide, and ethnic cleansing, and you have done this thing. And now, behold, we are in thine hand, and we are to make certain that this is a contract for indentured servitude, a legal arrangement entered into for a short and specified period of time that shall not end with us being perpetual slaves unto the Israelites. As it seemeth good and right unto thee to do unto us, do. And so he did unto them, and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, that they slew them not, which is yet another verse that can be turned around and reinterpreted, so that it said that the Gibeonites slew not the children of Israel, which calls to mind the exact same type of infanticide that the Israelites are so fond of committing. And Joshua made them that day hewers of wood and jars of water for the congregation, which of course thou already know us about, as we have been talking about that for the entire chapter, and, and for the altar of the Lord, which makes not any sense at all, for as non-Israelites, the Gibeonites were not allowed to get close to the altar of the Lord, even to this day, in the place which he should choose. So now, three thousand years later, if thou wert to go unto Israel and visit the ancient archaeological site of Gibeon, thou wilt still find Gibeonite slaves bringing water and food unto the altar that they are not permitted to approach. And at no time art thou allowed to remember that this chapter was about the ethnic minorities of Palestine gathered together to fight against Israel. Perhaps we shall discuss that battle in the next chapter, which, as we all know, shall contain nothing but a true life scenario that comports to all archaeological and scientific evidence. Until next week. Thank you for watching. Up to the walls of Jerry